Hey everybody. Oh, I got the camera too low. Hey everybody, it's Jamie. We're going to do a PTSD buddy chat with Jane. And uh, if you guys are uh, upset because you miss the videos, all you got to do is go to my profile and hit the follow button. If you hit the follow button, I'm told you'll get a notification when I go live. Okay? So, uh, yeah, I'm going to spin the camera. And there's Jane. How's it going, Jane? It's okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We tried to do this a few times, and it was my fault. I thought at the <laughs> time, I'm so used to people being behind me in the time. And it's you're strange because I'm in the UK, of course. So yeah, you're, you're ahead of me. So this is cool. What um, time is it over there? <laughs> It is, you've got me thinking that, uh, just past 10 past 5 in the afternoon. Oh, right on. So, mm -hmm. Jane, just like me, PTSD, hey? Yeah. Yeah? Have you been dealing with it? Sometimes, is it? <laughs> yeah. Have you been dealing with it a long time? Um, I was diagnosed in 2011. 2011? So, yeah, a good few years now. Yeah. So, you um, were diagnosed in 2011, but how long have you been dealing with it? Um... Probably slightly longer than that. It's, it's a strange one, mine, really, because the actual trauma happened when I was 13. Really? Um, and I kind of hid it. Um, I accepted what had happened, and I kind of dealt with it, and I could talk about it, and it never really bothered me until, say, 2011. It was Christmas 2010 when I had a conversation with somebody about a girl who was 13 and her, got herself in a similar situation. Yeah. Um, and I was asked for advice. And I don't know what it was about that conversation, but I put myself back there. And from that night, I had nightmares, I had flashbacks, and it just hit me full pelt. It was really strange, scary, really, really scary. Yeah, so like, you never had any symptoms for no. years. No, not I've heard, at all. Yeah, I, um, well, a lot of our viewers can agree with me. We've heard about that. I mean, like, so, some people, uh, right after the trauma, they get the symptoms. Other people go years, like 10, I've heard oh, up to 10 years, you know. Um, it's really weird. I mean, all I can think is that because my trauma was sort of a sexual abuse trauma. Yeah. And I think as a kid, as a 13 year old, you don't, you can't put it in context. You don't know what it is. Yeah. And I don't think it's as you as an adult look back then as to a 13 year old. I mean, my son's 14 now. Yeah. So I, you look back and you say, oh my God, that actually happened. I was that old. Well, I think, I think as a kid too, you're still trying to figure out what the normal is. Exactly. You've right. got nothing to, you know, got nothing to compare it to at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So a lot of times you grow up thinking that is the norm. Yeah. 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 And you certainly have no idea as to how it's going to affect you as an adult. No, no, you know, no idea at all. No. And, and it wasn't until, uh, you heard a story about an, another person. Yeah, um, it was a girl who got herself into a similar situation. A friend of mine who was a teacher was asking me for advice. He knew my background. Yeah. Um, and I actually said to him, I said, look, if it helps, tell her what I went through. I said, if it stops somebody else going there, tell her. Yeah, um, yeah if you can just help like, one person, eh? Exactly. Yeah. It was just, I don't know, I just put myself back there and, oh, I don't know, awful. You get the flashbacks, and I think people talk about flashbacks, and I don't think until you have them, you realise quite what they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the sounds, the smells, the... It's not just a memory, it's a lot more than that. Oh, no, it's smells totally are a big one. Yeah. Smells are a big one That's for me, and it's not just because I got a big nose. Before. Yeah, no, the smells were just like, oh, my God, awful. Yeah. When I was in grade two, my house came on fire, and I was almost burned alive. And, um, yeah, the, the, the smell of fire, you know, like mm -hmm. the burning smell still brings me back. Uh, Francisca, who's watching, said uh, she went through trauma as a child. And it wasn't until she was 46 that she started seeing symptoms. Wow. Yeah. People look at you like you've gone strange. Like, just like, well, how can that affect you now when it hasn't? Oh, you yeah. You think like yourself. You yeah, think, yeah. Well, and the whole I think get it, over it. It really and, makes you realize how, how, what your mind and what your brain can do. Yeah. And that's scary in itself sometimes because you're not in control of it. No. It's almost like your brain, you know, put it on the shelf somewhere to protect itself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know my, I think my brain is smarter than I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
My brain, my brain can't remember anything right now. That's my problem. No, you do get what you brain fog, don't you? <laughs> yeah, especially going from one room to the other. I go from one room to the other and everything just blanks out. What am I doing here? Why did I come in this room? And then my kid just sees me standing in a room looking around, right? What's wrong with Dad? <laughs> yeah. That's one of the really difficult things that I find with any kind of mental illness, trying to, how, how do you deal with your kids with it? Yep. Um, because <clears> you, you don't want to make it into a taboo. It's not something to be ashamed of, but equally, you don't want to scare them. No, no. Um, for, for years, I hid it. Hard. I, I did my best to hide it from my kids for years, right? Yeah. But I still do really from my youngest too, but yeah, it's hard. It really is. Yeah. I, um, when I finally decided to tell my kids and talk to my kids about PTSD, I was surprised on how much they already knew. And yeah, they take in more than we know, don't they? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it was almost like they went, Oh, yeah, and, and the someone's like, now we understand, Dad, why you, yeah, okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, my kids, for lack of a better word, my kids are like my service dog. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. kids can spot triggers, can spot when I'm, when I'm triggered, and they know how to calm yeah. me down. They're amazing. My eldest one certainly can. I remember... It was probably about Easter this year. We'd gone to a zoo, me and my partner had taken all three of them. And it was nothing more than I was queuing for ice cream. That was it. Yeah. It was busy and it was a queue and there were people behind me and my 14 year old literally just came and stood so close to me so that nobody else could bump into me or push me. I knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Um, he's just there looking out for me and it just means the world. It really did. You kind of wish they didn't have to, but yeah it, it doesn't mean the world yeah kira's watching right now and kira's trying to figure out a way to tell her kids she i guess hasn't told her kids yet and mm -hmm. uh, you know what like i said my kids have helped me so much i've told stories before i don't know i've told stories before about my kids being in the mall and seeing that i see can see that i'm triggered before mm -hmm. i even realize i'm triggered you know i'm just like mm -hmm. not moving right and they my kid, my son, he was like, I think seven at the time, took me to the bathroom, you know, and did breathing, oh, breathe, did breathing techniques. He just looked at me and said, Dad, I need to go to the washroom. Can I come to the washroom? Or you want to come to the washroom with me, please? And I just follow him. Like, I don't even think about my triggers because, you know, I walked into a mall and I'm surrounded by people. So now I'm triggered and I'm looking and thinking everyone's looking at me and judging me. And, and my son, who's seven, sees it and grabs him by the finger and says, Dad, can we go to the bathroom? Oh, and I don't wow. even think about the triggers no more. I'm like, okay, my son needs me. I'm focused on him. Follow him to the yeah. bathroom. He leads me into the stall, which at the time I thought was weird. He never did that before. He likes his privacy, right? And um, he, he he closed the stall and he said, Dad, I can tell you, you're not yourself. Do we need to do our breathing? And oh, I wow. went from I went from breathe not not breathing to like crying because I realized like he is such a help. Right. That's wonderful. And I just it? how in tune. Yes, like the and the kids, if the kids, if you can show your children how they can help, oh, they will. Yes. Yes. Definitely. And I, the only way I knew that my kids could help me is I was honest. I told them, Dad is nervous in crowds, you know, and things like that. Dad has nightmares, doesn't sleep well, and they do things with me to help me right yeah and, yeah and it's amazing because they want to help you do and they do there's no two ways about it um i've got i, I find pets really help me as well i've got my my dog sitting here with me oh yeah um my my trauma actually happened um in my bathroom um in my childhood house yeah so i have major issues going to the toilet sometimes um and if i'm in my own um this little furry guy here he'll come with me and he will literally stand so that I can keep concentrating on him and he's, he's just brilliant. He really yeah, is. That's awesome. He knows. Animals are amazing. If you can see him, there he is. <clears throat> yeah. Animals there are amazing. <laughs> I have a dog myself and they're amazing. They can, I think they can sense it when you're, when, when your mood is down or when you're feeling blue, Definitely. you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a question here from Robin asking, 
What can you do about short-term memory loss? Rob, that's a great question. I had the answer, but I can't remember it. I think I wrote it down somewhere. That's a joke. That's a joke. That was a terrible joke. But um, uh, the only thing that's been working for me is I go in my iPhone and in notes. <laughs> I got to leave notes of everything that I'm supposed to do and stuff. I got to write stuff down. I do. I write lists. Yeah, lists are huge. Um, my wife has a good memory, thank God. So a lot of times I ask her and she just goes, I told you. And <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Yeah, but... Uh, I don't know. I, th I think memory loss is just our brains protecting ourselves from yeah. shitty memories. I think so. Yeah. I'm looking through. There's, there is like so many comments going through here. Uh, uh, Chris says my six year old knows when uh, to say back up. Give me a second. Chill out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what kind of symptoms have you been showing though with uh, with your PTSD? I know for me, like I said earlier, crowds is huge. I ugh, I don't like anywhere strange. I like, like a, a building I've never been in before. No, definitely not. Um, I've got what we call my safe places where you know I, I just need to be. But um, yeah, going anywhere sort of different is is terrible. But I think the worst one for me is this constant feeling of anxiety yeah. not being safe yeah um and just being constantly overwhelmed and drained yeah everything's too much sometimes even just little things um to the extent that if my partner says do you want a tea or a coffee i really don't know the answer if i want tea or coffee it's too big it's too big a decision <laughs> which is stupid it really no it's not matter. stupid but i know i know it's just like my brain stops it yeah. completely stops yeah. i don't know oh yeah. yeah i think me and my wife who's trying to sneak by here uh, <laughs> <laughs> we both i think we hate when we ask each other the same question uh what, what are we having for dinner <laughs> yeah. right what are we eating oh we i hate that have, question we have to do it on a weekend now we have a menu up on the fridge because otherwise i will freeze i'll get the kids home from school and i'll be just like what do I feed them? Yeah. Um, even if there's stuff in the fridge or or, or the ref, or freezer or whatever. Yeah. Couldn't I wouldn't be able to choose. I wouldn't be able to put it together. So my my partner does that every, every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I, was, I asked. Okay, my wasp, my wife's freaking out because there's a wasp in the house. Action Ooh. packed. Action packed here. There's a wasp. <laughs> and I never understood why they call it wasp. It should be wasp. It's W-A-S-P. Wasp. Yeah, W-A-S-P. Yeah. Wasp. Yeah. Wasp. It's wasp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how about panic attacks? Have you had those? Yes. Do you remember your first? Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> is, is that, this sounds like a story. They, 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 again, it's just that, that feeling of what is my body doing? My first panic attack, what, I thought it was a heart attack. Just so scary. Yeah. I never knew what it was. I didn't know the name of panic attacks or anxiety attacks. I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah. So where you, you, you where were you? You feel like you're gonna die, don't you? Yeah. Where were you Literally. when you had your first when you had your first panic attack? I was at home, thankfully. At home. Yeah, I was thankfully. Yeah. Um, and somebody was knocking on the door, which is another trigger for me. Was that the trigger um, to set it off? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can totally yeah. relate to that. Yeah, no, anybody knocking on my door or parking outside the house or particularly knocking on the door, I really, really struggle with. Yeah. Um, again, if somebody knocks on the door now, my son, Harry, is upstairs. He will come and answer it because he knows I can't. Yeah. Um, I will just hide in the corner. <laughs> yeah. The unknown. I hate the phone. I think I I'm more... I the phone. I think I'm more... No. The phone triggers me more. Excuse me. Okay. Ugh. I think the phone triggers me more than the door. Honestly, I have a big Great Dane, so that helps. Plus, I'm a pretty big guy, so that yeah. ha that helps too, right? Yeah, I'm only little. I'm only four foot eleven. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, but I have a great big Great Dane who, by the way, is a big puss. But I don't tell people, right? It's a big soup. The cat will beat up my big Great Dane, who's like 150 pounds, but. From behind the door, my dog looks very scary, <laughs> right? And it will bark and shake the house. But once someone comes in, the dog just wants to be your friend, right? 
<laughs> but but the, the dog, you know, just you know, alone, just because the dog will bark when someone wants to, comes near the house. I think the dogs help so much because I I find in terms of grounding, sort of walking in nature, it really, really helps me. Definitely. But if I didn't have my dog, I couldn't do that on my own. No. Um, because he's a staffy, and people assume that he's a. a Tough. I mean, he's yeah. not. He's yeah, yeah. Fast asleep. Um, but people tend to. I mean, some people cross over the other side of the road. So it's just, it's just stuffy. Um, I like it because they know when someone comes near your place. Yeah. Well, mine's deaf, so he's a bit useless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Having said that, he's just woken up now. <laughs> no, he was born. He was born deaf. Um, but no, I find that he helps me get out and about a lot. Yeah. He does. Turn this up a little bit. Turn it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, mine helps me. There he is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> yeah, he's like, put the camera. He's not a camera person. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my first panic attack was in a grocery store. I passed out. <sighs> grocery store's awful. You know, um, I've heard and I've talked to a lot of people who their first panic attack was in a grocery store. Uh, a partner weird. had his first in a, in a grocery store. He doesn't have PTSD, yeah. but he's he's gone through stages where he struggled. And really? His first proper panic attack was yeah, yeah, grocery store. Angela says her daughter was eight when she was aware of her PTSD, and she's been a huge blessing. When I get triggered, she finds her own way to center me. That's awesome. Oh, right? like we said it before, kids are amazing. Kids and pets. They are. Yeah. Beautiful souls. <laughs> um, so when did you first start notice the change? Did was it you who noticed a change in you from your symptoms, or did someone say, "Hey, you, you're not yourself"? No, it was me. Was it you? Yes. Um, mainly due to the flashbacks more than anything else. I'd always sort of suffered with depression a little bit on and off. Yeah. Um, but the flashbacks were completely new, and the nightmares, the constant nightmares. Flashbacks. Eh? Um, so I, yeah, so I went to my GP. Can you talk about I the flash? Very, I was very lucky that my GP was very open and understanding and very approachable. And I felt that I could tell her everything. That's good. Um, and she was fantastic. She really was. Yeah, that's that's mm. a, that's really important to find a good one. So it you, is. I, I really feel for people who find, you know, have a GP that they, they can't talk to. It must be awful. Yeah, or on a waiting list. <laughs> yeah. So you had you had a lot of dealing with flashbacks, eh? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, the flashbacks were awful. They still are. I still get them. Really? Can you take us through like one of them? Like, what kind of flashbacks are you having? Um. Usually, going to the toilet is the big one. Really? Hey? Um. If I'm cleaning the bathroom, because when I was attacked, my head was on the floor, sort of by the side of the toilet. If I'm cleaning or if my kids are in the bath and I need to wash their hair, if I see that underside of a toilet bowl, yes. I'm there again. And that's been going on, like I say, since 2011. And sometimes it's worse than others. Sometimes I don't get them as much. Yeah. But I've never really got rid of them at all. Yeah. I mean, and that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a space that's hard to avoid. It, 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 it really is. Right. I don't know how um, you're I mean, going to avoid it. I thought you could build something new back. In the evenings, my partner takes me to the bathroom. He's like, who needs that when you're 40? Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's something that people take for granted. Yeah, it is. But no, that whole room just... <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah. And, and and like, like, like we said before, it's it, it, it's not a memory. It's, what, it's a lot stronger than that. It totally immerses you. Um, you're not remembering what it was like. You are, for all intents and purposes, there again in that situation. You can feel it, you can smell it, you can hear it. Everything is there. Yeah. Um, and I don't think until you've, you've really had a flashback, you really, really <coughs> what they are, really. I think it's a, a term that people hear and just use quite willy-nilly these days. But Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's a broad spectrum. Right? Some people can look at a flashback as uh, a memory and others will have a flashback where they're in that moment again. Yeah. They can smell it, they can see it, they can taste it like it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So 
it's a, it, it's a, there's a lot of levels to to uh, to a flashback, right? I thought I was having a flashback until I had a flashback. Yes. And my one, I like I thought I was having flashbacks, but and I turns out no, they were memories. My real flashback, I I was there. I was. Let's put it this way: I was in a vehicle and I was driving through sand. And I don't understand how I was driving through sand because I was in Canada, <laughs> right? But yeah. for a few yeah. minutes, I was driving through sand, and it was yeah. really weird. And it's just as scary on the level that you're taken over by it completely, and it's like if 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 my head is doing that to me, how the heck do I stop it? What is it doing? And that's scary on an entirely different level. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does. My dog's here now, sniffing at me. Oh. Here you go, look. Oh, bless. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, that's my, that's my buddy. Oh. And a great Dane, my God. If you're looking for a dog who wants to be a soap and lie next to you and cuddle, that's what they do. No, oh. she's oh. got to. She's got to have the the kisses and stuff every morning. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> They gotta have that every morning. Uh, Francisca, uh, I'm trying to read comment here. Uh, Francisca, I can't seem to go. Or, or, I can't seem to get to do anything, work, volunteer, or go see my therapist. I was a social butterfly. I was certified to be a speaker for mental health. You know, yeah, and, and now she, yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm sorry. I had to, I had to hit the share more or whatever because this was longer one. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm stuck. That makes me so depressed. What could I do? Uh, for social anxiety, I still deal with social anxiety, and I'm a public speaker. Um, the only way I can uh, suggest for for social anxiety is you got to get out there. As hard as it is, you got to get out there. The only way you're going to beat social anxiety is get social a little bit. Um, Take a friend and just walk through them all. Don't stop for anything. Just walk through. Get through it and go home again. Baby steps, you know. If all you can do is get to the parking lot, then you get to the parking lot next or tomorrow or the next week. You'll make it in through the door, right? Uh, and I, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I for me for, with social anxiety, I, I have a hard time going to. Uh, I have a hard time going to the mall. But I can get on stage and in front of a million people and talk. So it's weird. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, the only way to be social anxiety, Francisca, is to get out there. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah? I do. It's so, so hard, though. It is. It is so hard. For me, the hardest part is just walking out the door. Yeah, once you've taken that first step, you, yeah. you're over halfway there. Yeah. Oh, well over. Yeah definitely yeah um i know me i still i still deal with nightmares from time to time you ever, do you deal with that kind of stuff too yeah oh yeah definitely yeah um and the more that i try and push things away during the day if i've got all the kids at home and i'm trying to not let it bother me yeah those are the nights that i'll really really struggle yeah because i've been pushing it out all day it catches up with you when you go to sleep. It makes, it makes the days harder because you're not getting a good sleep. Oh. And you're so easily triggered then, I find. Yeah, it's like, it's a vicious circle, isn't it? Yeah. Have you had any reoccurring dreams? Um, yeah. Um, well, reoccurring sort of images. Um, my abuser, his face appears. Oh, yes. All kinds of weird places. Oh, no. So even something that can start off being an okay dream yeah next thing you know i've got yeah that's I, hard i find i have my dreams now are more anxiety type of dream than a nightmare like my dreams used to be uh, i had a recurring dream where my family was caught in a burning building right mm -hmm. and i hated that dream it was a vicious ugly dream but now i find my dreams are more and i call them anxiety dreams it's where i have a dream that i'm at work in the military and I can't find a certain piece of kit and the sergeant's yelling at me and I'm just right. searching for it, you know? Or I'm late yeah. for work and I'm driving through traffic. Nothing, no action, nothing, I'm just 
kind of. Yeah. That's what my dreams are like now. Than... Yeah. Oh, I hate them. It's strange because mine have changed a little bit recently. Um, yeah. In that, when was it now? Sort of the last week of July this year, I finally felt strong enough to re report to the police. Oh, After 27 really? Seven yeah. years. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. So, as you can imagine, I'm glad I've done it. Um, I'm waiting for a call. They're going to be bringing person in for questioning either this week or next week after all that time how does um, that feel but as you can imagine it's kind of changed things in my head a little bit in that it's taken him from someone that i had memories of and the flashbacks were there but he was in the past yeah. and now i'm aware that actually he has a future and a present as well Oh. And he's kind of been brought into my present, whereas he used to be just part of my past. And it's a bit odd. Like, if I go out somewhere now, because I know where he lives now. He's not too close to me, thankfully. But if I go out, I'm kind of more anxious that, oh, God, is he going to be here? Yeah, Before you I'm might see him. That. You might see him. Yeah, I totally get it. Mm. Holy so shit, it that's, a big, things, that's a big trigger, I'm girl. I've done it. <laughs> that's a big trigger, though. Like, man, how are you dealing with this? <laughs> Some days better than others. I bet, yeah. <laughs> um, it was kind of hard. I, I, I did it over the telephone originally. And yep. then a police officer came to my house and took an initial statement. And then two days later, I had to go into a police station and give a full um, lot of evidence to the CID, the detective, on video. Yeah. And that was hard. Oh, God, that was hard. Man, I guess me. so. Girl, you are brave hours. as shit. <laughs> you are brave as shit. Let me tell you right now. I gotta take a <laughs> taste because holy shit. Yeah, but I, I just feel, I, I do feel so bloody proud of myself. You should be. I'm fucking proud of you, and I don't even know you. <laughs> I'm even swearing about it. Yeah. So yeah, 27 years it took me. Good for you. Yeah. How does it feel <laughs> to make that phone call? Once you hung up the phone and was done, how'd it feel? Was it good? Um, was it a shock? Was it what? You know, I just felt numb. Numb, eh? Hey? Just numb. Literally yeah. numb. I was numb for a good couple of days, really. Really, eh? Hey? Because I think I'd, I'd played it out in my head that many times over the years, because it was always it was always something that pe people always ask you, and you tell them about the trauma, oh, did you report it? Yeah. No. Mm. I was 13, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, and... I don't know, I suppose I've thought about it because I've been through so many therapies and things over the years and it's always something that you get asked if you thought about reporting it. Mm -hmm. And for a long, long time it was always, no, I don't, I, I don't think it would help me. Okay. Um, and something changed just this last three or four months that for the first time I actually got angry about it. This last lot of therapy, it was like, do you know what? <laughs> Dang! <Dead. laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it started going around my head more and more. And yeah. then suddenly one morning, I, I, I just I felt strong enough and I, I came and I dropped my son off at school and I came home and I sat on this very seat where I'm sitting now yeah. and I called the police. Right on. Yeah. Right yeah. on. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it is awesome. Um, there's a lot of waiting, but I mean, when I got I got an email from the detective who's, who's dealing with it, sort of a couple of, when was it, was Friday? Yep. And just going to give me a call later this week but all he said was we found him we've got an address for him and he will be brought in for questioning either next week or the week after and it's just like oh. yeah good for yeah. you you know what somebody's going to watch this cried. video i just cried honestly people are going to see this video and going to be inspired by this video <laughs> and are going to do the same fucking thing you are i really hope so i know so i know just so just do it yep Listen, it, do you know what? It's not fair that somebody else gets to ruin your life. You gave me the goosebumps fair. and everything. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it when somebody gets what's coming to them like that, right? To do something mm. so I would ugly. love to be a fly on the wall when he gets phone call. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck the fly. Be a person in the window looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> as much as anything, I don't know whether there's going to be enough evidence to, to put, you know, bring any charges or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, I'm guessing it's going to be his word against mine, and he's going to deny it, and who knows? But 
just the fact that he will know that I now know what he did to me. The fact that he's going to know that you are angry and you are not scared. Yes. Yeah. And you stood up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Yeah. Fuck yeah. him. At the end of the day, and I don't want to trigger anybody here, but he raped me and I know he raped me. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. I was 21, not. I was 13. That is not okay. No, it's not okay. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. That's and if he's right. got a wife or girlfriend right now, she's going to fucking know. Yeah. Do you know, that, that was one of the things that for, for a little while I didn't want to re report because I'd looked on Facebook and I found him and I thought, he's got a wife, he's got a family, it's not their fault. No, it's not their it's fault. Not my, it's not mine either. No, but it's not yours either. And it doesn't, just because he's got a wife and kids doesn't mean he should get away with it. No, he's doing it to himself. Right? Who the fuck knows? Maybe he did to other people. We don't know. Well, exactly, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, he's got two sons that are teenagers now. What if they bring girlfriends home? Mm-hmm. We could play the what-if game all day long. Right? You yeah. would not believe how many comments are coming in. All kinds of comments oh, saying how brave you are. I can't see the comments. No, so no. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I've known them one. No, <laughs> <laughs> no every, everyone who's watching is saying how brave you are and how proud. Oh, wow. We all are. Right? Like we said, you are inspiring others. Right? That's kind of why I wanted to do this, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what else can we talk about? Um, what do you think has helped you the most in dealing with your PTSD? Is it this? Is it the moment that you made that call? Like, uh... I think that's one of them. And the other thing for me is meditation. I meditate every day. Oh, really? And it makes such a big difference to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, it... I now run a meditation group. Oh, go on. Uh, once, once every two weeks. And the first time I did that, that scared the hell out of me. Um, you're talking about social anxiety, and you've just got to do it. And I did it, and. You it's, ran it's, it's a meditation booked. group, did you? <laughs> it's amazing. You ran a meditation group? I do it every every two weeks Every now. two weeks? That sounds like something really cool if you, if little, you did a, a live video. video. Not far from me. Um, and the people who run mm -hmm. it are very open sort of with mental health issues. And, you know, they, they want it to, it to be a place where people who are struggling with anxiety or depression can go and feel sort of included and relaxed. So it was something that they wanted to do, um, and yeah, they asked me to if I'd, I'd have a go at it for them, um, and it's been fully booked every week since. So it's been great; it really has. Yeah, I think it would make a really cool live video. Imagine <laughs> if you went live on PTSD Buddies, and everyone yeah. who who was viewing watched you, and we did the breathing and the meditation with you. Absolutely, I can do that. That That's would be problem. cool. I would definitely tune in and do it with you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I bet you there's yeah. a lot of members watching who uh, or, or, or who are going to watch this video who would love to do a meditation. Uh, I can do that. Live video good. with you. That would be really cool. There's an extra tool they can use. <clears throat> Robin has a question, and um, I don't know if I can answer this one, but I'm going to try. Uh, the question is basically... Uh, I'll read it out. How do you handle when you have reported the abuser and they either got away with what they have done or they had just got a slap in the wrist? <clears throat> That's a question I, I don't say, know the Part of it for me yeah. is the fact that he will now know that I know what he did. Yes. Even if he doesn't get anything else. He knows that I know. I hear my wife in the background. I oh, can hear her. Go yeah, for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody else can hear you too, Vanessa. That's okay. Yeah. She, <laughs> yeah. He knows that, you know, you're he not scared. He's not going to get away with it. And, and he just knows that, you're not going to get away with it. That's that pure moment of when the police turn up and say, we need to talk to you about this allegation. That fear, that moment that he's going to go, oh, crap. That in itself. Yeah. You know, sometimes, too, when one lady or one person comes forward on a person, so does another one and another one. And next thing you know, there are three or four women, right? Well, I know that he had other people's numbers from where I went to school. Now, I don't know whether anything happened with those girls. 
but I'd given their details to the police as well. So, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, see what happens. it happens, you know, when one person comes forward, you never know. I mean, I hate to throw out names there, Bill Cosby, but uh, it, it, it happens, right? More and more people it does. come out. It does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, there are many people who are very interested in doing a meditation video. Oh, really? You. Yeah. There are, well, I've seen at least four other members who said, yes, please do it. Right? Okay. So, we'll do, uh, it. We'll do it. Members are very interested. Cool. We can do that. <clears throat> well, this is where I usually ask the last question. Okay. What advice would you give to somebody who's watching this and just was, uh, I don't want to say diagnosed, but just realized that they have PTSD? Because I don't just wait. <laughs> For me, you don't have to be diagnosed, right? You can tell something is wrong. You've changed. So, I mean, you've given it a lot of great advice. You've told us that you've stood up for yourself, right? So is there anything else, any other tips that you could give or a message you would send to somebody? I think the most important thing really is to just know that you're not on your own with it. Mm. It can be such an isolating thing to feel. Oh, totally. Um, you feel like you're, you're, you're stuck in those flashbacks or those nightmares and you can't move forward. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so scary to think that you're on your own. You feel so isolated. Yeah. Just just know that you're not. We're all here. We're all going through the same, different traumas, but those symptoms are just, they're there. We're all the same. Yeah. You're not on your own. You really not reach out. No, and it's true. It's true. You, st you feel like you're alone because, I mean, when you got a broken arm, you know how to go get a fix. You go get a cast. Everyone does the same thing. But with, when it comes to a mental illness, and there's no shame. There no. is no shame at all. Yeah. If you need help, ask for help. Yeah. Doesn't matter who from. And there's and there's no real cure for mental illness. There's no one thing that works for everybody. You know. Nope. So nope. Uh, that's part of the reason why I think it's uh, that's 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 the biggest battle, right? You got to find out what works for you. Yeah, and knowing that. While you're doing that, you will find things that don't work for you, and that can that can feel really awful. Yeah. Um, well, this worked for such a body. Why is it not working for me? Mm -hmm. Because you're not them. Yeah, exactly. And then you get yeah. and then you get down on yourself and get triggered. Oh, mental illness. God love it, eh? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, James, thanks so much for having a chat with me. It was really no nice talking problem. to you. Thank you for letting me. Yeah, and uh, maybe someday we'll do another chat, eh? Yeah, absolutely. All right. You take, take care, care now. Bye. Bye. All right, guys and girls. Thanks so much for uh, joining us and having a chat with uh, Jane. Uh, really great how she, after a few years, stood up for herself, contacted the police, and now Buddy's going to get a kick in the ass, let's hope, eh? Um, by the way, now, if anyone who's watching this uh, and you were, you didn't catch the live video, if you just go to my profile and click the follow button, you'll get a notification when I go live. So thanks to all of you guys who uh, tuned in. And if anyone wants to do a PTSD buddy chat with me, and it doesn't matter if you've already done one, we can do another one. Just send me a private message and we'll line one up. All right? Have a great day, everybody.